three days left. Just three days left for Vita. It's Vita 27. It's April 27th, 2012, and it's time for Comets X. First, right off the top. Happy birthday, Christi uh, Kristen. Yeah, that's my good friend Kristen's uh, uh, birthday today. I want to wish her a very happy birthday. I wish I could uh, be there with you for your party, but uh, if you take some pictures and maybe take some video and put it up, uh, we can see it, or, you know. <laughs> Anyways, have a really good birthday. I hope you get lots of presents and have, you know, the day you want. And on to uh, the rest of the business. Yeah, as things start moving along, uh, yesterday uh, was a bit of a cleaning up day. After the debugging, I did some uh, test shots. Uh, got some uh, new ideas, wrote up some scripts. Well, not actual scripts, but uh, so I don't really use the script. I use outlines. So I wrote those up. I wrote up some outlines. And uh, I've got a whole filming schedule for today. Uh, that we sort of chock full and comments X might be changing a little bit depending on the weather uh, I might do a test shot tonight or tomorrow night uh, and the way I was saying changing up a little bit is that it's not going to be done here it, it, in this but I might do it outside I might be doing comments X outside for a while now because it's getting warmer out and uh, as the weather gets warmer and you can sort of sit outside, uh, there's no place better than to do, a, a, you know, no place better to do Comet X. So that's where I might do Comet X. Well, I said it will have to be, uh, it's, what X, uh, <laughs> Comet X uh, will uh, be outside pending the weather. If we can get, if the weather cooperates and we can fill outside, then yeah. If not, then uh, we're not gonna do that. So um, then uh, I'm gonna be filming uh, the rest of the mass shorts today for the rest of the week. I'm aiming. Uh, you'll see a whole bunch of. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna see me around YouTube a lot today, and if you follow me on Facebook or whatever. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna start popping up uh, on on a, on on a f on a very frequent basis. There's gonna be a list of stuff. There's gonna be a list of stuff that I have to get out today and do today. So, uh, and as you see me uh, on the week of this today on Friday, start popping up all over the place. Uh, don't be too surprised. So, because uh, there's a I said there's a lot gonna there's a lot that's gonna come. Uh, that's going to be for the University Channel for, uh, for Physics TV. Uh, I'm going to be doing some work on, there is a new, uh, 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 not really new, it's been just sort of sitting there for a while. It's called iScience Fair. It's an internet science fair that uh, my, uh, my, several of my institutes host. Uh, And the whole purpose is, is to help, and this is sort of what the prize is. The prize isn't money, the pri is, is it money or anything like that. The prize is more esoterical than that. Uh, or, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah, if you think money is esoterical, then fine. But uh, the, the whole purpose of this is to help uh, young scientists, people who want to be scientists or heading in that direction of science and engineering uh, to start working in their field. Uh, the, fi the, the One of the catch-22s when you finish in uh, with your degree in science, particularly if you're in engineering, is you can't get a job if you're, you don't have any experience, but if you, you but <laughs> and, and the thing is, there's no way to get any experience unless you're hired for a job. So the thing is, is you're left at the you're left at the uh, at the end of uh, some pe some of the students are left at the end of uh, their degree program, scratching their heads and wondering what to do next. And because it, 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 they finish the degree pro program, they say, "Oh yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot that can be done in here." 
they see what's being done they don't realize that a lot of uh, what's being done is being done by indep either independent contra contractors or by university research institutes so if if you're not one of those when you finish uh, when you finish your bachelor's degree and more often not you're not uh, then you're gonna have a hard time finding a job but so the, the one, one of the sections I'm going to be building into uh, the I science sphere is the is the engineering section it's going to be designed for students who are either close to finishing their engineering degree or have finished their engineering degree and can't find a job what this is going to do is this is going to give you the work experience uh, and the ability to showcase what you can and can't do in other words uh, rather than walking in and saying hire me I just finished school what you're going to do is you're going to go you're going to find some projects to work on you're going to fix them up just the way you would for any science competition you're going to display them on the internet as you would because you, you can do posters you can do a whole bunch of things on the internet now uh, like you would in any science fair including if you put up a YouTube channel or or you put up videos from my on MySpace or on uh, or on uh, High Five or, or or Facebook, any of those places. If you set up a page, or wh or wh however you choose to do it, it's up to you. There are a number of options now that you can set up. You can show people your work, and that's what I Science is for. I Science Fair is for. I Science Fair is that science fair. Uh, that allows you, that really it gives you the, the motivation to go out there and, uh, and, do, and do something to build a portfolio with, uh, with um, uh, your skills. And that's what's going to help you get hired. The, the more, more you have in your portfolio, the better and the more options you'll have, and you, the more options you'll have to get hired. And this is something that's important. If you don't have anything in your portfolio, the thing, and the longer you don't have anything in your portfolio, the worst off it's going to be for you, because that's what they're going to. They, they want us. When people hire engineers, they don't hire engineers for no reason. Engineers are supposed to be the intuitive, the the imagination that develops imagination from you go from concept or imagination to reality. And if you can't demonstrate this, going from imagination to reality, because reality, this is what you do, uh, an engineer is applied science. It's the theory of science, and more particularly physics, applied to reality. So uh, if you can't demonstrate this, you can't demonstrate your capacity to do this, then no one's going to hire you. It's not a matter of, oh, you know, oh, you look like a nice fellow, you're hired. No, uh, people, uh, businesses in many cases, are, uh, and people who are going to hire you for a particular project, are significantly more uh, pragmatic about their choices than you would think. It is about what you can do, and if you can't demonstrate your capacity, one for imagination, and two to bring the imagination forward into reality then you, 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 no one's going to hire you because, because they, they don't want to take a risk on, uh, on, with, with you on a particular project. And so what happens is, it, 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 projects aren't something that's going aren't, aren't to aren't be done in one to two weeks. Most engineering projects are 5, 10, 15, even 20 years out. And they really want to see when you're working on a project, in terms of the type of project, how long do you spend on it? How much effort do you put on it, even though the finish date or the projected finish date is years out, right? And if you can't demonstrate this, your capacity for this, then you're not going to get hired. You need to go look for a job in another field. And actually, this is what happens. A lot of engineers, or particularly some, some who finish with their bachelors, uh, won't go on and finish, won't go on and stay in engineering because they can't handle that. Because, again, even if you choose a project and say, I'm going to go forward and do this, 
there's no guarantee that you're going to be successful at this. All engineering, all of this type of research it involves a degree of risk. Uh, and this is why it's actually associated with business, because business and entrepreneurship uh, is risk-based. So they, they're actually very, they're very similar. And if you can't demonstrate your capacity for risk, your pension for risk, then uh, no one's going to support you in what you do because no one wants to pay for something if you can't stand up and demonstrate that you actually have something or have the potential to have something. And so this is sort of where if you're a student and you're just finishing and you haven't got a good portfolio, a good demonstration of what you can do, in other words, all your work is paper, then you're going to have some significant problems later on. Uh, so, as I said, uh, the three programs are, are, are coming in. The I Science Fair is going to be under the university. It's going to be under APIS, the Astronomy and Physics Institute, and it's going to be under uh, well, because uh, APIS is part of it, it's going to be a part of API or AP. The, a the AP Institute, the Astronomy and Physics Institute. So that's really the, 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 those are the three sec These are the three areas, the three institutes that are going to be supporting I Science Fair. Uh, it doesn't have to be in astronomy and physics. It, it, it could be in any direction in the science. Uh, it it's for those who want to step out of the average science fair, which is basically a uh, dog and pony show. It's it's a it's a where you do your projects to appease the judges. This isn't the goal here. The goal isn't to be th to be uh, petted in among amongst the best. You know the best in the show. Uh, the, I'm using a dog ref a dog show reference or a horse show reference. Uh, the goal is. And this is where Iron Science Fair is, is headed for. The goal is is to make scientists out of people who want to be scientists or in, or engineers. And we're going to be doing. The goal is to do cutting edge stuff. Get used to doing projects. If you want, you know, start up a project that's three months. Then once you do the three months, and if you see that you can do it. Do a project that's six months, and you can do a project. The six-month project doesn't necessarily have to be a brand new product project. You can take a look, look at more or not. Take the the stuff you did for three months. There's more in there that you haven't seen. So the the better idea would to take that three-month project and go over it again for six months, and see if you could produce something. No, take that risk. And then after you've done the six months, then try for the year. You know, go for the you know. Double your your expectations in terms of in terms of the, that risk that you're willing to take on. And what, if you can get up to doing a product a project uh, a research project for the year and come up with quarterly reports on the on the, on the work that you're doing on your uh, you produce an entire website toward, towards it. And it doesn't have to be a website that that that, that you have, you create yourself. You could use Facebook. You could use there's a whole variety of different avenues you can you use. You can do this. This is how I, I one of, one of the reasons why I chose YouTube, because I have a whole variety of things, and I'm I'm going back and fixing up my website. I actually have websites. I have my own web servers, but they're under reconstruction right now, uh, because they kind of fell behind, and I was trying to get more people to sort of see the work that I was doing, and put out content in a much in a much more efficient manner, and I was watching. Uh, one of the channels who inspired me, Cassandra's Nerds RL, and watching what, it, what she was doing, I said, you know what? This would be a good avenue, YouTube, setting up a YouTube channel, or several YouTube channels, uh, and publishing my papers to here, rather than writing out my papers in full. Publish the papers here, here as documentaries, right? And that's this is where Big Bang, uh, Big Bang Theory all started. Because I really didn't know how to do documentaries as uh, as research papers. I knew how to do documentaries, but the most documentaries they're narrated and they they're light and fluffy. They're not really, you know, 
they're, they're not really they're not research papers and I really didn't know how to approach it and so as I was watching Nerds RL I realized that if I did something like this did an RL or a reality show here on YouTube and this is what this is this is, this is a reality show uh, and that's why it's called Big Bang Theory RL uh, it's a reality show based around uh, one, but around me. I'm I'm the astrophysicist, and as I do this, I get to practice. Um, and this is what blogs are for. What is a vlog for? If if you're going into other fields, you can use vlogs one for advertising because it gets you out there, gets you seen. So that's your marketing tool here. This is how I'm getting out and getting seen. Uh, two, it's given me practice, particularly the RL part, because RL is real. It's real life. You don't need to really do a lot of fancy editing. You just sort of sort of have to sit here and and come up with a conversation and and talk to people. Uh, there's also an, a, a whole thing of mannerisms. How you speak to a person also affects uh, how they think of you. Uh, now, it's not, not and you realize that not everybody is going to like what you say. Not everyone's going to like who you are. Uh, and so what happens is you're not going to try to get out there and do for everybody. You're going to do uh, what you feel comfortable with. And you're going to try and grow and expand and get better at what you're doing. And this is sort of gives you your step into a sort of a, a, a progression. You're aiming. And again, you're not aiming, you're not aiming uh, a month out. You're aiming maybe a year, two years out that you'll get really good at this. So this, I'm still up because I'm within my first year. Uh, Coming up, let's see. The first I spent my first, I started in basically January first, so it was going January, February, March, April. So basically, I've done I've done four months. We're going up to four months. Well, I've done one third of the year. So uh, there's still a lot more to go. I'm going to be making a lot more mistakes, uh, but that's what this is for. That's what RL is for. RL is to, is your beginning steps out and. Because RL is the behind the scenes, is the reality, you get to see all, anything that's going to be developed, including uh, the foods for the Silk Road, uh, things that go on when I'm t working on uh, Adventures in the Library, or for the Matt now, the new, sh the new show, uh, the new uh, series coming out for uh, the University Channel, uh, which is called Math Shorts, the first, uh, set, the first one that's coming out for the Math Shorts. The math torture isn't going to be one thing. It's going to be a whole variety of things. Now, uh, the, the, and, and I've ch changed it. I didn't know what the title at first, because everything's being done on an abacus. So the first level of mathematics now, the first series that's coming out, out from math shorts, is going to be uh, the abacus. And you'll see that as uh, I up, I'm going to be doing, uh, I've got two on in the editing bay. I'm going to record another three today. So that would be five, five uh, math, uh, five uh, segments or episodes because they're very short episodes uh, of the abacus is going to go up. Uh, uh, is going uh, they're going to go up today. Uh, so yes, yeah, so you'll see behind the scenes. We're, we're talking about that now. We talked about the I science sphere. That's going to be on. Uh, uh, it's going to be primarily on physics TV. So the announcements for it. Going to come out eventually. Going to come out on Physics TV. We'll start the list up. Uh, I'm going to put out another announcement. Uh, and the thing is, the links are going. To, I'm going to put a lot of links in the down below bar uh, to the Facebook page because they're associated with Facebook pages. And what I'm going to start doing now is I'm going to start pulling all of the internet sources that I have out there. I'm going to start pulling everything together, and this is going to be done within my wiki notebook. Uh, and so that I can really have a well-organized uh, uh, system uh, that I can really walk around from institute to institute and get all the work done. Now, this isn't this, this doesn't uh, uh, this is not the research that's actually being done. This is sort of what how I'm going to bring out the research that's being done. So right now, I'm still preparing the platform. Some of the research is coming out in uh, in Adventures in the Library. Adventures in the Library is the demonstration of library science. Uh, if you're not familiar with this type of research, uh, is uh, library science is for for anyone who's interested in research is the is the very basics of research. 
uh, and it applies to everything. And so it's the very basic, it's the very basis of the university. The university uh, is based entirely in library science. You don't walk into a course and sit there and listen to the professor and go back and take notes. What you do, what you do is, uh, in, in, in academia university in the university, is you is you go into the library and you begin at any point in the library and you work your way out from that seed, that kernel, out to all those diff all, to as many areas as you can find. That's how we start off with a common term, a common derogatory term that, that we usually throw around today. We start off with the term moron. And from the term moron, we've hit on the history of words. We've hit on the history of words. We've gone into psychology, psychiatry, neurology, and now we're into uh, uh, organic chemistry and carbohydrates. I mean, so to, to say that you cannot go anywhere significant and cover a lot of good topics, you know, the, the, sort of a, the well-rounded topics, by doing by doing called we'll call the random walk, which is a part of, of quantum physics, is false because we're just, we're doing right here. We're, you see that we're doing this. In the, the Adventures in the Library is a demonstration of the exploratory scientific method uh, based on the random quantum, the quantum physics random walk. It's a it's a clear demonstration, and this is and, and, so this isn't simply a paper talking about the theoretics of the random walk. This is the random walk. And it qualifies in many ways as a chunk of the research. And this is what, what the university is based on. The university is based on, you go into a library, you have an idea, a thought and idea, and then you follow that thought and idea out throughout the library. You just start walking around and following that idea throughout the library, seeing where it takes you. And you're not predicting where it's going to take you. You're not directing it. You're allowing your research to, to dictate the direction you're going. And the other thing is that the classical scientific method, the standard scientific method, is you have a purpose, you have your method, your observation, and you have a conclusion. The purpose and this is what the whole purpose behind the classical scientific method is, is to test an idea to see whether or not it's appropriate or not, or there's the right idea. And you're testing this idea out. But the thing is, is that that's not exploration. You're not exploring the idea. You're trying to fit your idea within preconceived idea, ideas are way we call approved standard knowledge. But unfortunately, that's sub, that's subjective. Approved standard knowledge is not subjective. Is not is not objective. It's subjective because it's subject to the human mind. What you want to do is you want to break loose from that. You want to explore. You want to see the university, the universe as it is. And so, when what happens with quantum physics is that both the because the you can't predict things in quantum physics, everything exists in in a state of probability. Because uh, you have the uncertainty principle, and it, this has been well demonstrated within engineering that uh, you cannot do without uh, a physical model. You cannot do things uh, purely within the computer system on a computer model because things do not mesh out. They don't. They do not meet reality. This is why people wonder, oh, you must be brain dead to not believe in global warming. Well, the problem is, is that global warming was built based on a computer model. And if you know anything about engineering, you know anything about, uh, about uh, the quantum physics and the, uh, and the Heisenberg uncertainty, pr pr uncertainty principle, then you know that the computer model never, ever meets reality. And unless you're working on a dynamic model, that's basically, basically you're taking your data right from the uh, uh, right from the satellites. You're not creating a computer model about this. Then you don't have anything. The Boeing engineers understand this. 
any engineer who does any form of building, from the, from the, the research engineers at the universities and the professors, they know this. They know that things cannot be done entirely in the computer because the computer does not ma match the reality. You always have to have a physical model. And this is the flaw of global warming. Global warming is based on a, on a, on a theoretical computer model. It's not real. It has no basis in reality. And it can be easily demonstrated like this. Uh, uh, as I was saying, you know, the classical ideas of science are gone. And because things are uncertain and uncertainty, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle can be demonstrated that way, that, and that means you're now looking, you're now removing from your scientific method, you're removing purpose, you're removing conclusion. All you have left is method and observation, and that's full exp that that's exploratory research. And then you take an idea, we took the word like just the way we took the word moron, we began looking up in the dictionary. Your choice of sources really matter. Where you go look, the more objective. The sources, and in other words, the more removed from our current reality of the sources, the better. This is why I choose old dictionaries, like this, because this dictionary is old. It's it's, it's from the 1960s. There's no way I have any influence on this. Further, there's no way, way that modern society and the changes in the way modern society thinks has any influence on this. This is already set. And so when we want to go research a word, this is the place to go. Same thing with a science dictionary, the science encyclopedia. We want to do, use something that's older. And this is, unfortunately, you can't find this on the internet anymore because everyone wants to digitize and update things. And as soon as you've done that, you've now modified this time, this, time, this is a time capsule frozen in time digitize this and put it on the internet, particularly with the, the way things are done with copyright and people who modify and change things, then that's no longer an objective time capsule that you can go and look, uh, look and research things. And now it becomes subjective. So as I said, research starts from a single kernel idea, expands out, your methods do matter, because it, it will actually determine what you produce and what you don't produce, uh, and then once you've got uh, you've got enough uh, information and material collected the way we have, you can now start seeing. Oh, you can start fitting together. You can see how things fit together. You get a picture out of the puzzle pieces that you've collected. In other words, this is a puzzle. Research, engineering. University, my university, the academic university, is one massive puzzle. The pieces are scattered all over the world, all over the universe. You choose one idea that interests you. You begin from there and you start researching and sp spreading out from there within the library. You don't have to go to a library anymore, even, even though you can go to a library. And I recommend highly that people do try out the library first. That's where I started. I started off in the library. Do that first, do the, bit, the library bit first, and then move forward. Because uh, you can actually build an entire library on the internet. That's what I'm doing. I, my library now is primarily electronic. I started off with these books here, but I have an electronic library. This is sort of what I've been working on. I want to do uh, getting the screencasts working so that uh, when, and this is going to be in about a week or so, we're going to be augmenting the, uh, the book studies uh, here with uh, research on the internet, using the internet as a massive library. And you will be seeing this, and that's why I wanted to get the screencast done. The screencasts are done. They're, it's fixed up. It's working. It's in HD. So we will proceed uh, <laughs> and get things done. So as I said, you know, there are a lot of choices. There are a lot of different things up there you need to look at. Uh, the whole part of fun of this is if you are an inquisitive person, you want to explore the universe, you want to be an explorer, you can be an explorer and uh, move forward. And I think this is true for engineers. Engineers 
Uh, part of my job is engineering, I do, and that's what I'll be working on uh, next week or so, is getting my engineering labs operational. Uh, I have an engineering machine shop in back behind me, the back door here. That leads to my engineering machine shop. That needs to be fixed up. Uh, in the front, where uh, I do a lot of some music and everything, the video editing, there's an electronic lab bench there. Uh, I need to get my electronics engineering set up there properly. I mean, there's a lot of work still left to do, and, but this is, this is part of it. You have to be able to, as an engineer, if you want to be an engineer, you have to be able to bring concept and an idea to reality. And if you can't do that, you're not going to get hired. Anyways, that's it for today. I'll see you around. I know it's been a little long. <laughs> Once again, Christine, happy birthday. No, it's not Chris, Kristen, I'm sorry. <laughs> Getting the, the, the Kristen and Christine mixed up. Uh, happy birthday, Kristen. I uh, hope you enjoy your birthday party. And I forgot at the beginning uh, to say this at the beginning, but I'll say it, say it at the end. Christos and Esti, Monsieur Cham. Take it easy.